It was a little town. A very little town. Everybody knows everybody. I like that. Life, it was my parents and my brother and those I was playing with in the evenings after school on the village green. When I was little, I used to think it was a view of heaven. We were free. On the loose. At 15, I started to feel confined a little. constrained. I was feeling something in my stomach growing, a bit like feeling nauseous. I dated this guy, Anthony, um, my best friend. We used to take baths together when we were little, so I thought that it seemed normal. I liked him. I kept telling myself that all these weird feelings I would have would disappear with him. We slept together. And I didn't really like it, but I thought that was normal, you know, for the first time. And we were talking a lot, so I told him that I was troubled by girls, especially by one. And he was really sympathetic. And he told me it was normal. And he pushed me to go through with this desire. I mean, at first I felt better because he had accepted me. Then I understood that he was hoping for a threesome. I dumped him. And then he started to tell everyone that I was a weirdo. A dyke. Um. Then there was this day, um, uh, it was the summer and I was performing with my school's drama group on the village green. Um, I, I was the best and I'd got the leading role and I was playing a boy so I cut my hair very short and my mum had made me this really great costume with a uniform and a cape and then um, when I got up on the stage I hear the voice of this guy um, a friend of my father's so I looked at him and he stands up and he grabs his crotch and says when you taste it, it will change everything. And that I just had to find the right one and all this bullshit. I mean, not even creative. And everyone laughed. Everyone, from all these people that I've grown up with, my teachers, my friends, my brother, so I look at my parents and they're sitting on the front row and they didn't laugh. They didn't, but they remained silent. They watched everyone making fun of me. 
It's not as if you were watching a show. You know how well. The worst part is I, I don't even hate them, I just... After that, everyone was silent. My parents didn't talk about it. But I felt people's look in the street and I knew that they made fun behind my back. I was so alone. Not completely, there was this one girl. Um, this girl I fancied. Um, we used to hang out for hours in my room and we drank until we fell asleep. And I thought I saw her eyes sparkling when looking at me. Only that kept me going. I thought it was possible. So, one day I tried to kiss her and she rejected me, as if it was gross, like, it hadn't even occurred to her. Nowadays I know that she was afraid, but at the time she was laughing, as if it was ridiculous. After that she told everybody. My parents were really ashamed. I felt it. So, I went away. I, th I think they were sad, but a little relieved at the same time. I don't know. I haven't seen them since. Three years. We keep in touch over the phone, say Monday and stuff. Yeah. But never asking. Never. They're afraid of the answer. Feel good here. I don't know whether this is my home yet because my home is still over there, but maybe that's going to change now. Now that you're here. Silence, the needles stop the kick. 